call a demon. <laughs> I love hurting demons. <laughs> Glory! Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 and yes. What a time to be alive. In Ephesians chapter 6, Hallelujah. What's the first word? Finally. It's like, gosh, I hope you got it. <laughs> Finally. Finally, my what? Brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord. Well, now, what's the word Lord represent? Spirit. So what's he saying? Be strong in the Spirit. Amen? And in the power of his might. In other words, be strong in the Spirit, in the anointing of the Spirit. If you're strong in the spirit, there's power. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? That you may be able to stand against the what? The wiles or the trickery of the devil. So he, he expresses here, listen, be strong in the spirit and his power and not your own. And put on the whole armor of God so you can overcome. Listen, putting on the whole armor of God is being connected you're reconnecting. And what does he say? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against rulers of darkness in this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's what you're fighting. These demonic forces are influencing humans. They're influencing humans. Amen? Amen? So in this, these humans that are not battling, humans that are not filled with the Spirit, humans that are not disconnected from the world, humans that are not connected to Christ are being used by the devil. Every one of them. All the good ones. They're being used by the devil. Because they're trying to express their goodness to reject Christ. Anything that rejects Christ is antichrist. Anything that does not submit to Christ is Antichrist. Anything that doesn't believe in this Bible is Antichrist. Does everybody get it? Oh, there's a lot of so-called Christians out there. They don't believe the Bible. They're Antichrist. Because they have no idea of covenant, which is in here. Amen? This is a covenant book. It is covenant. Oh, there's a lot of good Christians out there but they're really not Christians. They're still eating from the tree of good and evil and not from the tree of life, which brings righteousness. So they can't discern righteousness. That's why they're all masked up and gloved up. They're still under, that's the veil. All those people that are wearing those masks out there are veiled because they don't know the truth. Not only do they veil physically, but they're veiled spiritually. And they think that they're good because they're obeying the rule of law here. Even though it's really not the rule of law. They think it's the rule of law, but it's against the Constitution. People are deceived. It's a global deception. It's a what we call great delusion, which God warned us about that would come. They're in it. They're in it. Everybody okay? Verse 13, or verse uh, 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the what? Truth. So where are you going to get the truth? Not from your neighbor. Amen? You're going to get it from the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, where well, righteousness comes from God's presence. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is the word of God, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you are able to quench all, all, all in all, meaning every, fiery darts of the wicked one. Those are what he throws at you every day. Amen? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, 
which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in tongues, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Powerful. Be strong in the spirit and power of his presence. To make war against evil forces of corruption that bring destruction. Amen? They are against the will, plan, and purposes and love of God. I'm going to say that again. These forces are against the will, plan, purposes, and love of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hmm. You know what? In this, we're to resist daily. We're to resist daily with the array of the eternal armor, which is the armor of God, by being dressed with it, which is from the Lord. See, the Lord will dress you. He'll dress you with his armor. Well, you can't carry nobody else's armor, but he dresses you because he knows how to perfectly fit you. So that you and I can resist the forces of influence and endure the sufferings of emotional attacks. I'm going to say that again. So that you are able to resist the evil forces of influence and endure the sufferings of of emotional attacks from persecution. Again, the enemy is out to emotionally mess you up. So there's a place where we are to resist and endure. Resist and endure. He's talking about a warrior level. What is a warrior level? It's the ability to resist temptation, endure emotional sufferings in a constant, in a constant pattern. In a constant, in other words, you're able to resist and endure constantly. It's a continuous. Warrior level's ability to resist temptation, endure emotional sufferings in a constant pattern of attacking, of attacks, hating the compromise and the wickedness, hating the compromise and the wickedness. <laughs> Why? Because it's a high priority and a high level of your character as a new creation in Christ Jesus. It's a new lifestyle. This is not something that is just, okay, it's the weekend or, okay. This is a lifestyle. This is a constant lifestyle. You live, you are out of the old. You are no longer in the old or compromising from the old. You don't justify from your old no more. Well, it really wasn't that bad. Well, you're an idiot. That means you're still connected to the old. You're to hate the things of the old to move on to the forward. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. You have a new character. You have a new, it's an all new lifestyle. It's a new way of the life. 1 Peter chapter 5. Level of a warrior. God desires to turn every citizen into a warrior. But people are resisting the call. They're not willing to go through the training. They're complacent in their flesh. They're comfortable in their soul. They've lost a the desire for the kingdom business. And that's a backslidden condition. First Peter chapter 5, and verse 8. Hallelujah. First Peter 5, chapter 8, let's speak it. Be what? What sober mean? Alert. You got it. 
Biddy, 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 biddy. You're alert. Yes. You're alert. That means you're seeing, you're hearing, you're alert. You know where the mines are, the traps are. You know what's what. You know what the enemy's next attack is. There's a strategy. You can see it being set up. You're alert. Amen? Be sober. Be vigilant. What's vigilant mean? Consistent. You know, if everybody was alert and consistent, we wouldn't have no problems. <laughs> the problem is they're not consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour or what? Deceive. Again, it means, roaring lion means, the only thing the way he can deceive you is what you hear. He's going to throw that fiery dart, you know. He's going to make that paper airplane. Don't pick it up and read it. Amen. It says here, resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you are not the only one. Alert and consistent. Understanding that the attack of the voices is a daily trap for all humanity. It's a daily trap for all humanity. There are those who have been taken captive by that voice of the stranger. And those who are resisting that voice. You and I don't know the voice of the Lord. Listen, you don't know the voice of the Lord if you not, haven't known the voice of the devil. We all grew up knowing the voice of the devil and the voice of the flesh. We all know that rebellious voice. Amen? Everyone knows it. You know what's right and wrong already. <laughs> it's just a matter of being strong in the power of, his, of the Lord and in his spirit so you can say no to it instead of saying, well... Let me just pet this evil for a little bit and see if it goes away. No, you feed it, it stays. Amen? Oh, happy days. All right. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace who called us and invited us, amen, training us, you've been invited, to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? After you have suffered. That means <laughs> you've endured. Suffering is enduring. What are you enduring? Emotional attacks. Is that going to bring training to you? Yes. After you have suffered a while, then perfect. That, that word perfect is a place to bring you into a place of complete. Complete a training session. See, God brings us through cycles for training. If you don't pass, you repeat. Amen? So it starts with repent. Amen? <laughs> then you can repeat. <laughs> After you've endured for a while, and he's completed this enduring cycle, then he what? He establishes you. That is your position of stance. Establishing you is a position of stance. And strengthen you. Well, yeah. In the power of his presence. And then settle you. Hmm. Settle this battle as a continuous part of the new life. It's settled. that You're going to battle for the rest of your life. Does everybody get it? That must be settled in you that you are going to battle every day for the rest of your life. If you want to be a warrior. Is everybody okay? So we must be alert and consi consistent understanding that the attack of the voices is a daily trap for all humanity. But a warrior must endure the sufferings of emotional attacks coming into a completion of training session established in your position stance or positional stance in the power of his presence and settled this battle as a continuous part of your life because it's a new life remember you don't have a life we gave our life to christ so why do people still fight for their life because they're not connected 
See, if you're disconnected, you fight for you. If you're connected, you fight for him. Because there's a love affair. Second Peter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Love of a warrior. Welcome to Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace. That's strong in what? God's plan. Strong in what? God's plan. That is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful, consistent men who, and women who will be able to what? Teach others. Listen. As a warrior, you must be able to teach. So everything you learn here, you must think, how can I teach it? So if you're an individual that doesn't take notes, God notes it. Does everybody get it? He notes it. He knows whether you're taking notes or not. He knows where your desire is a teacher or not. He knows whether you're going to qualify or disqualify for being a warrior of his. Hallelujah. Verse 3, you therefore must what? Endure hardship. What's the endurance of a what? Emotional tax. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the emotional affairs of this life. <laughs> that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You are enlisted as a soldier before you become a warrior. Amen? And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules or God's way. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you the what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, from which I suffer trouble as a what? Evildoer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I what? I what? Endure all things for the sake of the elect that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Be strong in the plan of God, discerning the counterfeit plans of the enemy. There are counterfeit plans of the enemy. Always being alert and to enforce the plan of God in your life. You are the enforcer of God's plan in your life. Amen? And then you are not only an enforcer of God's plan in your life, but you're to wait for the command to proceed. So there's times when you're waiting for some, the next part while you're continuing to do God's plan. So he's got you on a mission. He's got you something you're doing while something else is getting ready to take place. There is no... Stopping. We rest in the Lord while we move. The moment you stop, you get hit by a truck. That's why some people have tracks on the back of their butt. See, there's movement in the spirit. There's movement. It doesn't mean you're staying busy. It means you're battling. And you're enforcing God's purpose and will in your life, in your training. You're enforcing it. And while you're waiting on the next command, you're enforcing the one he's given you already. Then when the next one comes, you enforce that one. 
so that you're now allowing your flesh to dictate. Your new man is dictating. Amen? Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Hallelujah. You know, you think about Peter. Peter was rough. <laughs> he was rough. But look what God did to Peter. Amen? I'm here to do denies Jesus three times and try to interfere with him. Lord, I'll protect you. <laughs> like God needed protecting, you know. Lost well, sight of that. But then the Lord still says to him, he says, listen, Peter, on the revelation you got, I'm going to build my church and I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. And he, then he, right afterwards he gets rebuked by the Lord. Get, in my, get out of my way, Satan, he says to him. You're an offense to me. Your only will is according to man, not to God's will. And people can turn that quick. That quick. Boom. One minute they're, next minute they're. That's why you must be consistent. You must be consistent. You cannot compromise this. Any loophole the enemy's in. Any loophole. Is everybody okay? In verse 17. 1 John chapter 4, 17. Hallelujah. You know, and the word says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Weak to what? Weak to the voice of the stranger. It's weak to the presence of evil. It's weak. It cooperates with the presence of evil. Verse 17, it says, love has been what? Perfected. That means completed among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. In other words, here's identity. As he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. See, people are still looking at themselves according to what the mirror says. They're still looking at themselves according to what their past says. They're still looking at themselves according to what their emotions say. They're still looking at themselves as their failures and their successes and their abilities. That's all temporary. You must begin to look at yourself at what he says, how he sees you. He sees you as more than a conqueror. Does everybody understand that? He sees you as a new creation in Christ. He sees you as the character of his son who he sent into this world. But see, too many people are still going on how they feel. Well, I don't feel like Jesus. I never asked Jesus how he felt. In fact, he never asked anyone else how they felt. I never read anywhere in the world where Jesus said, how do you feel? <laughs> Verse 18, there is no what? Fear and love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Are you tormented? What is torment? Anxiety, stress, worry. Me, 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 me. Rice burner. <laughs> and what's a moped? But, 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 but. <laughs> and a Harley's come out, come out, come out, right? <laughs> there is no fear in love. This is God's love. world's love is lost. And there's a lot of fear in that. People are, af they're afraid they're going to lose their spouses. They're afraid they're going to do this. They're, they're, they're afraid to lose their job, their boyfriends, their girlfriends. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid. Fear, 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 fear. It's not of God. There is no fear in love. Look at all the fear that's hit the world. 
That's not God's love. That's not God's love at all. But perfect fear casts out, or perfect love what? Casts out all fear. Wow. Because fear involves torment, fear, anxiety, stress, anxiousness, worry. What about me? But he who fears has not been made complete or perfect. That word perfect is complete. Complete in God's love. He hasn't reached that place where God's love. There's not been an exchange of God, your lust for his love. Everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. No fear, worry, anxiety, or anxiousness. Knowing that fear will distort all discernment. That's why he tries to come with fear. It will distort all your discernment. Because what does it say? God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a what? Sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. So if the enemy can come and bring you fear and connect you to fear and get you to agree with fear, it distorts your discernment and it will also distort your direction. A, a warrior, a level of a warrior is the ability to trust God, His Word, and His counsel in a perfect love relationship. There was a perfect love relationship with him. Hallelujah. Judges, chapter 7. Unless you judge, you be judged. And the Bible says that God judges us. But if you won't examine yourself, he'll judge you. He'll examine you for you. Judges 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Level of a warrior. How many want to go to that level? That's what he's raising up right now. Warriors. Many are called, but few can make it. In verse 2, let's speak it. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. <laughs> now, therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. That means there was 32,000 people out there to fight, warriors, supposedly. But 22 of them went. He said, if you're afraid, fearful, get out. Go. Why? Because you're going to be a danger to the other ones. You'll be nothing but a stumbling block to them. So here we start out with 32. Amen. There was 10,000 left. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 4. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people said, but the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will what? I'll test them for you. <laughs> then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you. And the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you. The same shall not go. So God was qualifying warriors. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. So those that were lapping did not get down on their knees. They were alert. They were holding the sword. 
bringing the water up to them. Does everybody understand that? And a number of those who lapped putting their hand on their mouth was 300 men, but all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you. So he started with, well, how many? 32,000. They ended up with 300. 300 out of 32,000. And I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. Now, this is powerful. <laughs> See, the other ones were alert, and the other ones were not alert. A true warrior will never bow their knee to the flesh. They will never bow their knee to the flesh or to the ruler of corruption. Does everybody get it? They don't bow their knee to the flesh. They hate the flesh. But one who's really not a true warrior, who's a pretender, will bow their knee to the flesh because the flesh comes before them. In other words, it's them first. I have to have this. They'll, they'll lose sight. They'll lay down their weapons, and they'll feed the flesh. But a true warrior is alert, not concerned with the flesh, but concerned with the spirit. Philippians chapter 3. level of a warrior. Praise God. Where's my prayer booklet? Philippians 3. Oh, happy days. In verse 7, let's speak it together. Philippians 3, chapter 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Christ. You know, you, you got to come back. A, a, a warrior is always remembering what God's done for them. He's, they're always, they always remember where they were. Amen. Listen, I remember being out there in the pain and the sorrow. And the fear and the guilt and the condemnation. I remember. But I don't stay there. I just remember for a second where God has brought me from. I don't glorify that. I'm disconnected from it. But I do remember what he's done for me. It is a testimony and a witness within me of what he's done for me. Amen? Verse 8. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as what? Rubbish. That I may gain Christ again. You cannot compromise your past. You cannot justify the things you've done in your past. You can't make excuses of it. You must hate your past. And cut loose of it to gain the future. That's what a true warrior does. Because see, anyone that's still petting any part of their past, the enemy has access to them. And they will compromise they will compromise. They'll say they want to do a lot of things for Christ, but they'll put their own fulfillment and agendas first. Oh, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having, <clears throat> not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may what? Know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. See, when you're going through stuff, a warrior thinks Jesus went through this. In fact, he suffered a lot more than I'm doing right now. So praise be to God. And you know, you, can, you always think somebody's in worse condition than you are. And then God can bring you out if you let him. If by any means I may what? Attain to the resurrection from the dead. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfected. I'm not completed yet. 
But I do what? I press on. I'm reaching that level. I'm going after that level. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. What? Forgetting those things which are what? Behind. Forgetting those things. Cutting loose from them. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree, that word degree means level. Nevertheless, to whatever level that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. But let us search and desire and abound to another level always till we reach a warrior level and then maintain it. Looking back to the old ways of life with justification, compromise, or sympathy. Or sympathy is dangerous. You were to be picking up, picking up the sword to continue in call, purpose, and destiny. There are no options of defeat as a warrior. No options. Defeat is not an option. Does everybody get it? Defeat is not an option. Second Peter chapter 1. You know, so many people think that because they prayed for something and God didn't answer them that they got defeated. That's not true. You just keep pressing on. Defeat is when you stop. See, because the enemy emotionally attacks people. Well, I worshiped real hard and I didn't feel nothing. So what? Were you going to worship God for a feeling, or were you giving him honor and praise? Well, I prayed for healing, and I didn't get it. Well, pray for deliverance, then. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what? Oh, thank you. Open it to a warrior. Hallelujah. Second Pete, chapter 1. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Are you blessed? Glory. Second Peter, chapter 1. Verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be what? Multiplied. Multiplied means much. <laughs> Amen? In what? The knowledge of God. Well, how are you going to get the knowledge of God? Wait for it. Maybe you'll get a letter. Maybe you get a phone call. Amen. No, you're to seek. Seek. Everyone say seek. Go after. Chase. You're to drill. <laughs> Go deep. You're to learn. You're to absorb. That's what he's talking about. That you may in an, uh, learn more in the knowledge of God and, and of our Jesus Christ our Lord. As his divine, what? Power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. Wow. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to this life. That's his divine nature also. Look at, by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises that through these things you may be what? Partakers of the divine character of God Almighty, which is the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through what? Lust. In other words, you're overcoming lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. It means control over your flesh. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. 
For if these things are yours and abound, you will never, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins, his old ways. In other words, a person is still compromising or justifying his past. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Divine power and divine nature and divine presence. This is a priority to a warrior. A priority. It's a priority to sustain victory in this temporary realm is to maintain the divine power, presence, and nature of Christ Jesus. John chapter 4. John, Gospel of John, chapter 4. And verse 21. Jesus said to the woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you don't, you don't even know. People are still worshiping what they don't know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is, is, is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. I'm telling you, a warrior is a true worshiper. Is a true worshiper, man. He goes after the presence. She goes after the presence of God. Knowing without the presence of God, we're nothing. They are true worshipers. They worship with all their heart. In other words, they're worshiping with all of their breath. All their breath. All their breath. Then I... <laughs> Need a water gun sometimes, you know. <laughs> Maybe wake a revelation. It's raining. <laughs> Get a drink. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the Father is seeking such to those who worship him. So if he's seeking a true worshiper, in other words, he's saying, warrior, 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 warrior. Come on up. Let's go up to another level. For God is spirit, and those who worship him must. That word must means command. Worship in spirit and in truth. Spirit is breath. Amen? Breath. My worship God at my offering last week. That's nice. Did you get touched? <laughs> Listen, don't get me wrong. There's a place of worship, but then there's a place of worship. Amen? Your worship, what's he after? Your heart. He's not after your money. So many people think God's after my money. Like he doesn't have any. You know, I think some people give a tithe saying, I'm going to lend this to you, God. But I want interest. They forgot God gave it to them from the beginning. <laughs> They're not warriors. <laughs> a warrior knows that he doesn't own anything. But yet he's the steward of everything. So he knows the Father owns everything, and he's the steward of it, so he's got access to everything. See, that means if he doesn't own it and the Father owns it, he's just a steward of it, so he takes care of it. But God provides everything for it. 
Oh, happy days. A true worshiper, true warrior, knows the priority of God's presence. Romans 8. Oh, yes. Romans chapter 8. Another level, another devil. Glory to God. In verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For you, if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. I'm telling you, warriors are sons of God and daughters of God. Amen. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom you, we cry out, Abba, Father. That means Daddy. That means there's a relationship. Glory. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Come on, think about this. You're a joint heir of Christ. What a position that puts you in. That's why you're blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. You're a joint heir of Christ. As a warrior, you know this. You know you're seated in heavenly positions. You know that you have access to every demonic hold that there is. You know. And you're waiting on the commands to target every location and release destructive fire. Hit these places. Ask God to dispatch his angels. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider the sufferings of this present time, this temporary realm, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. And even the world, which is bound by corruption, is waiting for me and you to take over. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Wow. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful. And those who led, wait for the leading of the Holy Spirit, knowing the eternal life is a reward. Eternal life is a reward. That's your reward. Amen? We are heavenly bound all the time. We're heavenly bound all the time. We're not earthly bound. We're heavenly bound. We always know that no matter what's going on, man, I'm going, whatever happens to me, I don't know I'm going home. 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians nine. Glory. First Corinthians nine. We are homebound. That's why we can call each other homie. If you're homebound, you're a homie. If you're not homebound, you're homeless. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Praise God. To all the homies listening tonight. Fight. <laughs> Fight. 
Let's speak it together. Verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. What's the prize? Eternal life. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty. Th thus I fight not as one who beats the air. We don't beat the air, we beat demons. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. We, <laughs> we are consistent. You know, to be disciplined, I discipline my body. Well, the key to discipline is consistency. Amen? That is a fruit of discipline. Consistency. To maintain a high level of discipline where the spirit rules the flesh and not the flesh rules the spirit. It's a high level of discipline. It's a priority. Psalm 15. We'll close at Psalm 15. How about that? <laughs> Level of a warrior. Are you willing to pay the price? Well, you have no choice. Because <laughs> if you're not in a battle, you become a casualty. Oh, happy day. <laughs> okay, no touch. Come on, we got one more left. Blood of Jesus. Verse, or Psalm 15, let's speak it together. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle... And who may dwell in your holy hill or your presence? He who what? Walks uprightly. Now, these are qualifications. Amen? Do you walk uprightly? Are you learning to walk uprightly? And he who works what? Righteousness. And speaks the truth in his heart. Doesn't compromise. Doesn't lie to himself. Doesn't justify. He who does not backbite with his tongue. Ooh. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. In other words, emotional suffering, attacks, persecution, he ain't changing. Not a man pleaser or a God pleaser. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of position and shall maintain a level of a warrior. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask again, Master, that you would please seal the seed that's been imparted tonight and give everyone a thirst and hunger, not only for your righteousness, but to reach the level as a place and position as a warrior for your glory, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug tonight and tell them, fight.